Good afternoon. I'm Barbara Shaler, president of the Bibliographical Society of America, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to the 114th General Annual Meeting and Program. Following the pattern that was established last year, we're going to do only brief business. I hope this does not disturb you. <laughs> We have to do an official business meeting because it's mandated by our bylaws, but last year it was determined that we could do a better job at not boring the audience before we then had a substantive paper or discussion. So today, after the business meeting, we will have a panel on teaching bibliography, why we should be concerned about the classroom and also about individual mentoring, how do we actually teach bibliography in different disciplines and at different types of institutions? And what are the future challenges for all of us as we begin to deal with issues of technology, forensics, and all of those exciting things that are coming into the field of bibliography? So I'm looking forward to this, and I know our panelists are too. But first, I need to acknowledge a major change in our organization by thanking Michelle Randall. Michelle, could you please stand? As most of you know, Michelle has been a mainstay and a steadfast presence at the BSA for more than 20 years. And this is in an organization where there is a natural flow of change. As members of the council change, as the officers change, and Michelle has been there for us during these periods of transformation. So I want to thank you, Michelle, for your years of service and for your dedication to the organization. Thank you very much. I also would like to now extend a warm welcome to Aaron Schreiner, our new full-time executive director, <laughs> who assumed her duties in mid-September. Uh, this has been a year of especially demanding work for the search committee, the officers and the council of the BSA, as we conducted and finalized the search amidst our myriad other responsibilities. But we all know that this has been a long-term objective for the society, to have a single individual dedicated to the, to the society as a full-time leader. And we are so pleased that Aaron is excited to be joining us as that full-time leader. I personally owe my special thanks to past president Martin Antonetti, who co-chaired the search with me, and who provided constant guidance and advice about all aspects of our society as I also made the transition to president. And my thanks as well to the other members of the search committee, Michael Ryan, Jennifer Lowe, Barbara Heritage, and also to Scott Clemens and Joan Friedman, all of whom played a wonderful role in conducting a successful search that had more than 30 applicants. It was a lot of work. I think I should add here that many of you in the audience also served as referees for the candidates. So I am grateful to you for the time that you took to write your letters and then to talk with members of the committee. This was also, I know, a lot of work for many of you. But the results are good, and I think that it is a wonderful time to acknowledge that we're changing leadership, and partly because we have a refreshed mission statement, and I will remind you, that the council finalized um, after a long period of discussion, and we have some new values that I wouldn't put up because they're quite long, but they're values that place us firmly in the 21st century. And for this, I am really grateful for the work of the council. I hope that all of you are as energized as I am about the future that we have in front of us. And with this, I'm going to ask Aaron to come up and make a few remarks. Hi, 
everyone. Um, thank you so much for that very nice introduction and thanks to you all for being here. Um, I am very pleased to be stepping into this role. It is a really exciting time of growth for the BSA. We, as you'll see later in the program, have a diverse and exciting award presentation um, from our fellowship committee. We had a really strong applicant pool this year and over almost 70 applications, um, which just shows the interest in bibliography and the growth of this important program. We have programs scheduled for every month of the calendar year, and there will be um, conf the, the conference conference panels that the BSA has traditionally sponsored as well as workshops and other new types of events that you can you will see updated soon on our website. Um, there's new access options for PBSA. If you don't know already, you can now access the full archive of PBSA online by activating your online account with Member Planet and when you renew your, your membership for this year. Um, and we also have our new brochure, which we are extremely proud of and excited for your comments um, on. And we hope you'll share the brochures widely. I want to extend um, a special thank you to our committee chairs. Uh, you might not know who they are, and I think that was an important part of the traditional program of this um, organization, that we would have the opportunity for our chairs to get up and, and share their work. And I want to just recognize Sonia Drimmer, the chair of the program committee, Doug Pfeiffer, chair of publications, Joan Friedman, chair of the audit committee, Elizabeth Ott, chair of the membership working group, Nina Muzinski, the chair of the working group for international development and collaboration, Jackie Vossler, the chair of the finance committee, and Hope Mayo, the chair of the fellowship committee. These are our leaders and they are the people that are making BSA into an organization that is vibrant, along with all of those who serve on their committee. So I'd just like a round of applause, please, for all of our committee chairs. Um, so please, if you have not done so already, renew your, your membership or join if this is your first time here at the BSA an annual meeting. I welcome you to our community and um, thank you so much for your support of this organization and our bibliographical endeavors. So, thanks. Thanks, Erin. I'm really looking forward to working with you in the years ahead. We're going to begin our formal meeting now with the Schiller Prize, which is awarded every third year, endowed by Justin Schiller, a dealer in antiquarian children's books and a past member of the BSA Council. The Schiller Prize for bibliographical work on pre-20th century children's books is intended to encourage scholarship in the bibliography of historical children's books. It brings a cash award of $3,000, not inconsequential, and a year's membership in the society. I would like Andrea Immel, chair of the Schiller Prize Committee, to come forward to announce this year's award winner. Hi everybody, I'm delighted to be here this afternoon to present the award. Uh, Justin was planning on being here, but he senses his deep regrets. Unfortunately, he's having some health issues, and so uh, he's very sorry that he won't be able to be here at the dinner and to meet the prize winner. <clears throat> As Barbara just said, uh, Justin established this prize to encourage scholarship on historical children's books in which bibliographic method is foundational. The committee has selected Marussia Oakley's 200, 2016 monograph, The Book and Periodical Illustrations of Arthur Hughes, published by the Private Library Association and the Oak Knoll Press as the fifth winner of the Schiller Prize. Dr. Oakley has succeeded in bringing Hughes out of the shadow of his better known pre-Raphaelite brothers in this well-written volume, <clears throat> beautifully designed, 
by David Chambers. It's an absolutely splendid book from a design and a historical method. Even though Hugh's daughter destroyed his personal papers, Oakley was able to identify a wealth of documentary evidence in Great Britain, America, and Canada about his relations with the authors and publishers of the works he illustrated during a long career. The first chapter is a marvelous account of a three-way collaboration between Hughes, who is carrying the most uh, onerous load, Millet, and William Rossetti on the illustrations for Willing Al William Allingham's The Music Master. It will ring true to anyone in this audience who's been involved in a similar venture. Associated mostly now with a handful of images for George MacDonald's Wonderful Fantasies for Children, Oakley's revelatory selection of Hughes illustrations for Christina Rossetti, Good Words, The Sunday Magazine, among other th works, are perhaps the best evidence for her claim that Hughes was one of the best English illustrators of the 19th century. So, Marussia. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, microphone. Right, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, no one could feel more surprised or stunned to receive this award than I do. It has been a long journey to this point, but I did not get here on my own. I am indebted, greatly indebted, to David Chambers and the Private <laughs> Libraries Association for their expertise in publishing this volume. And I am immensely grateful to Leonard Roberts, you, some of you may know him, of, of Vancouver, whose vast knowledge about Hughes and his works has been invaluable to me throughout my research. I hope this book will now bring the work of Arthur Hughes, the quiet and almost forgotten pre-Raphaelite, to a wider audience. And finally, thank you for the tremendous honor of this prize. Thank you very much. So we have now a few more items of business, and I'd like to call upon Jennifer Lowe uh, as secretary for the organization. Thank you, Barbara. As of the close of 2018, the BSA had a total of 451 members in the following categories. Honorary, four. Lifetime, 50. <coughs> Leadership, 14. Sustaining, 74. Partner, 279. And Emerging, 30. This represents a decrease of 36 members since last year. In 2018, the total numbers of subscriptions to the Papers of the Bibliographical Society of America was 526, an increase of 43 over the previous year. The Society received sad news of the deaths of six of its members during the course of 2018. Douglas F. Bauer, J. Hanrahan, William Helfen, Ian Jackson, William Reese, and Linda Smith. Let us please take a moment to observe their memory in silence. Respectfully submitted. We move on now to the treasurer's report, and uh, Scott Clemens, if you would come forward. And I think you have more than yes. one slide. Okay, it's that button. <laughs> as if to underscore her insistence on brevity, Barbara said I could use whatever notes I wanted as long as they fit on a three by five card, recto only. <laughs> So what I thought I would do briefly is just look at how we did last year from an operating standpoint, what the budget is for 2019, and how our investment funds are allocated. 
And here are the headlines. You can see 2018 actual 2019 budget hasn't changed that much. Support and revenue is largely up to you. That's largely driven by a combination of membership dues and generosity to the annual fund. So thank you for that. Keep up the good work and please respond enthusiastically when you get that letter from Barbara later this year. Of course, the endowment is an important part of our support as well. It helps us overcome that operating deficit. You can see the five broad areas in which we spend money. The BSA office is our director, as well as everything that goes along with that, that make the trains run on time. It's printing, it's mailing, it's postage, it's telephone, it's, it, it's all of that which adds up. Overhead is sort of what it sounds like. That's legal work and that's accounting and auditing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We try very hard to keep those broad areas as flat as we can so that we can increase the other aspects of our programmatic mission. And I'm pleased that in the budget the council passed this morning, you can see precisely that at work. Slight increase in the budget for the papers for next year. Uh, overhead has remained roughly the same. Professional services roughly the same. Grants and awards has ticked up quite nicely. For the first time in my time at the BSA, we're now uh, planning to give away more than $50,000 in grants, awards, and prizes and fellowships. That's good for all kinds of obvious reasons. It also helps us raise and broaden the profile of the society. It helps us identify and attract new members. That's all good. That's where we should be spending our money. You see at the very bottom in the right-hand corner the, what I've labeled the deficit as a percentage of the endowment. That is equivalent to our spending rate. That is the percentage of the endowment that we need each year to fund all of these good things. We try very hard to keep that no higher than 5%, and for the past number of years, we've succeeded in that. That 5% drives what we need our investment funds to do. So our investment funds, this is not rocket science, our investment funds have to generate at least a 5% return on average over time, plus a little bit more because we want them to keep up with inflation so that the real support can, can remain the same. Cost of pursuing our programs rises each year. The endowment needs to rise each year as well. We hired a new investment manager in January of 2016. That's been two years ago. Two years is not a terribly long time. Since then, our funds have returned on average 7%. So we're earning that five plus a little bit more. That's led us to have an asset allocation that looks uh, like this, very simply. About 80% of our investment portfolio is invested in equities and stocks. About 40 of those percentage points here in the states, about 40% outside of the states. 20% roughly in bonds. And the roles they play are obvious. Equities drive return, they protect against inflation. The bonds are kind of an anchor of stability. That's what helps us sleep a little bit better uh, at night. I've quoted some percentage returns. I think it's also interesting to look at real life dollars because we don't spend percentages, we spend dollars. And it's pretty straightforward. When we hired our new investment manager in January of 2016, we gave them a little bit over $3 million. That's the size of the endowment at that point. Over the past two years, we have withdrawn 300, this, this is a suspiciously accurate number, $324,999 and not a dollar more. That represents that spending rate over two years' time. The markets have made our portfolio grow by $670,000, so where we wind up today, or this is of last Friday, $3,348,000 in, in a little bit. So we have kept up uh, with inflation, and that's uh, been a desirable outcome. Neither of these things come easily. I'm grateful to the committee members who, who are on the spending side of this. I'm grateful to the Finance Committee and Jackie Vossler, who chairs that committee, for watching the investment side of it. But your society is in good shape, and with continued attention, will remain so. And that's my piece. Thanks, Scott. That was very clear. We're in good hands. Thank you. Uh, it's time now to talk about the council. As I referred to earlier, the council rotates. Members go on and off every year. And so for the nominating committee, I would like to ask Elizabeth Denlinger to come forward on behalf of uh, Martin Antonetti, who's not with us today, to talk about the new slate for the council. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> the 2018 nominating committee is Martin Antonetti, uh, who is the last in Illinois. Barbara Heritage was here, and myself, Liz Dunlinger. Um, we present for approval the following slate of nominees for the class of 2022. Caroline Durosen Mellish, Alice Schreier, Ken Soner, and Jackie Vossler for a second three-year term.
And at this point, I need to have a motion to accept the slate as proposed. So can I have a motion? Terry, thank you. A second? Second. Thank you, Barbara. And now I need to have a vote. So all of those who approve this slate, please say aye. Aye. Is anyone objecting? Are there any abstentions? We have a new slate of candidates. Thank you so much. And now it's my honor to thank the service of those outgoing council members. And I'd like them to stand to be recognized. John Boktel, Nina Muzinski, and Marsha Reed. We can... With the exception of the executive director, we are a volunteer organization. Everyone who has been up here and who will be up here speaking serves as a volunteer. And we are dependent upon all of you to want to be on the council, to want to serve on committees, and to be willing to do the work that will move us forward. So I thank the outgoing council members, and I welcome the new council members, and look forward to their participation in the society. And now the chair of our audit committee, Joan Friedman. On Thursday morning, the audit committee met with our independent auditors, Condon O'Meara, McGinty, and Donnelly. This year, the society contracted for a full audit. I'm happy to report our auditors have given our books and operations a clean bill of health and reported good working relationships with the BSA office and the executive directors. I want to thank the members of the committee, John Bidwell and Tad Boner, Bomer, as well as Scott Clemens, Jenny Lowe, Jackie Vossler, Aaron Schreiner, and Michelle Randall for their hard work and sound advice. Respectfully submitted. I think those of you who have been around for a while will recall some audit reports in the past that seem to be a bit long. So Joan, I thank you very much. That was very much to the point. Okay, and lastly now, we have a report on the fellowship committee. And I'd, uh, I'd like to ask Liz again to come forward. Hope Mayo is uh, recovering from a um, bruised ankle and can't be with us. So Liz will be giving the report on behalf of her. Thank you. When it comes time, I don't, I don't have where the slides break. What? I don't know where the slides break. I'll just, okay, just bring it. Okay. Okay. There. okay. Um, so the fellowship committee consisting of Hope Mayo, who was there by phone, A.G. Berkowitz, Heather Cole, myself, Andrew Gobb, and Nick Wilding, and John Hoover met at the Nolan Library of the Metropolitan Museum of Art on Thursday, January 24th. Um, I was chair pro tem, and we made the following awards. Short-term fellowships, Hui Sang Cho, Writing in Squares, the Eurasian Nexus in Korean Buddhist Textuality. I know a Castro Correa, the book before the book. Stephanie Frampton, Cicero's Library, the Roman book and the making of the classics. Carson Kepke, the role of Tyronean notes in early medieval educational culture. Jane Raish, unmasking the first facsimiles. 1500 to 1800, Andrea van Leerdam, Woodcuts as Reading Aids, Matthew Wills, Mediating the Message, Book Culture and Propaganda in Mao's China, the Catherine Panzer Senior Fellowship in Bibliography and the Book Trades went to Anna Reynolds for Finding Waste in Early Modern England. The Catherine Panzer Junior Fellowship in the British Book Trades went to Janet Stiles Carson, A Curious Undertaking, Collaborative Making of an Herbal <clears throat> in Georgian Britain. Uh, topical Fellowship Award winners were uh, the Pine Tree Fellowship in Culinary Bi Bibliography to Caroline Barta, Ka Kitchen Literature, a Biography of the Cookbook, 
the Pine Tree Fellowship in Hispanic Bibliography to Lorenzo Di Tommaso, The Apocalypse of Pseudo-Methodius in Medieval Spain, the Charles Tannenbaum Foundation in Cartographical Bibliography, shared by um, Rodney Kite Powell, Collector's Bias in Assembling a Map Collection, and Jill Mackin Falcon, Ashinabi Movement Through a Sacred Landscape, Red Skies, Birch Bark Scrolls. There were, hmm. Okay. I was gonna say, where are the Reese Fellowships? Um, there were, there were two Reese Fellowships for American Bibliography and the History of the Book in Americas. Eric Lamour, Abigail Field Mott's 1829 abridged edition of Alotta Equiano's Interesting Narrative, a critical edition. And Jill Falcon Mackin, Ashinabe Movement Through a Sacred Landscape, Red Skies, Birch Bark Scrolls. That's a three person uh, collective um, project. The BSA ASEX Fellowship for Bibliographical Studies in the 18th Century went to Megan Pizer for Gender, Disability, and Finding Women in the Archives, Establishing the Provenance of the Marguerite Hicks Collection, 1660 to 1820. <coughs> the BSA Mercantile Library Fellowship in North American Bibliography went to Caroline Wigginton for Indigenuity, Native Craftwork, and the Material of Early American Books. And the BSA Rare Book School Fellowship to Matthew Demota doctoral candidate at the Center for Comparative Literature at the University of Toronto. Thank you. I'm now going to conclude the formal part of the business meeting. And I'm going to do this because I would also like um, to make a plea for your generosity. We had more applications for fellowships than we've had in the past by considerable. We've had more excellent applications and we really are dependent on uh, the philanthropy of numerous people to be able to award uh, these grants. I feel strongly that our future, especially with emerging scholars, is going to be supporting their bibliographical endeavors. And so I would like to ask you to think about this, and I can tell you that this will not be my first request. So I would now like to move on to our panel, and I'd like our panelists to come up and join me, please. <laughs>